and where government needs to get out of the way. Back in Washington, as you all know, we've been working to address many important issues facing our country. And I wish I could tell you I'm optimistic. I am optimistic about America, but I have deep concerns with the direction we are taking with respect to fiscal responsibility and the legacy of debt and government intrusion we're leaving for our children and our grandchildren. We all share a common responsibility of leaving the world a better place for our children. And I'm afraid that the majority of Congress right now are advocating on that responsibility. The massive, massive tax and spend proposals, $4 trillion so far, that have been signed along in the past few months have real impacts on your personal fortune. Whether you're a small business owner, an employee of a larger company, or the CEO of a major corporation, the laws being passed will affect your life. You'll pay more in taxes, have less say over how your company is run, and have more government intrusion into your business practices if we do not steer this ship in a different direction. One proposal that I have strong concerns about right now is the current push to limit carbon dioxide emissions through a cap and trade program. And if you're not familiar with that, the plan that actually passed the House Committee Thursday night, so it's maybe coming to the House floor and pass the House of Representatives in the near future, would set nationwide limits on the emission of greenhouse gases and would require companies to purchase credits to meet the emissions requirements. However, Estimates have shown that a 15% mandatory reduction in carbon emissions could cost the average American household $1,600, $1,600 in additional energy prices. Many of us in this room can afford that, but there are many Americans that cannot. Energy costs are already high, and Texas and our nation are currently experiencing one of the worst economic periods in our country's history. Even aside from the economic impacts on our families, it's simply ludicrous to think that we, the United States, can impact global warming by handicapping our domestic industries while carbon emissions continue to grow enormously in nations like China and India. I'm opposed to the cap and trade legislation and will work with my colleagues to find alternative solutions to our energy concerns that promote our energy and give us the energy we need while protecting our environment. I don't think the two are mutually exclusive. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you all today and look forward to hearing your views. Just by the way, we have offices over here at Sugarland, a uh, little north on Highway 6, uh, 59, the Kensington building. We also have an office in Clear Lake. And if you come up to our nation's capital, I would love to have you drop by our, our office in the Cannon building, room 514. Again, Kamala, I want to thank you for hosting this meeting this afternoon, this town hall. I look forward to answering your questions. Fire away. And thank you very much for your time. The president of the Turkish, Texas, Turkish American Chamber of Commerce, I said he was underway. Now he's here Hello, together. Mr. President. How are you, sir? If you touch base with a number of Turkish population, Turkish American population here in Houston, not only this turquoise center is home to Turkish American, but also it is home to Azerbaijani, I mean Turkic Americans, yep. like Azerbaijani Americans, Turkoman Americans, Kazakh Americans, Kyrgyz Americans, as well as Bosnians, Macedonians, and Albanian Americans. So the center itself is promoting the diversity. I'll go with the first question. You know, uh, the former mayor of Sugarland, David Wallace, is a great friend of I believe yours. Yep. Yesterday, I, yesterday morning I visited him and I told him that you would be visiting us, that we would be very much honored. He once he told me that just in Sugarland there are 74 different languages spoken. And what inspires you to serve for so many diverse uh, traditions, colors, nations, or how do you represent them in DC or here in the district? So, Thank you for that question, Kamal. Did everybody hear the question? Um, I think the great thing about my district, and uh, really here the greater Houston area, is we're a microcosm of America. I mean, we have every ethnic group, every age group, you name it, they're here in the city. 
and we all exist. It's like our founding fathers envisioned. And I'm extremely proud to represent the 22nd District of Texas and be part of our congressional delegation. One thing I'd like to tell you about our delegation, you know, you've got Al Green's picture down there. Uh, you know, you have five Republicans now and three Democrats who represent the greater Houston area. And I can tell you for a fact that if something's important to the greater Houston area, all eight of us will come together, circle the wagons, and fight like heck to make sure that the greater Houston area, there's not a less partisan delegation in Congress than the Houston delegation and the Texas delegation. Um, the things that have inspired me, sort of get back to your question a little bit, too long. I mean, again, the makeup of the district, it, you, this is America. I look across this room and, and I see the country that our founding fathers envisioned you know, over 230 years ago. But then I look at my children and, look at, and start looking at the world that they're going to host. And uh, I was just in a unique position, I felt, uh, to get involved and do something to make sure that my kids and my grandchildren have a better world uh, than I did, which has been America's dream, which has occurred every generation in our history. And we can't be the first generation in American history which hands our children uh, a worse situation. So that's what's motivating me. And as long as I continue to make progress and do a great job representing y'all, I'm going to stay. Yes, sir. Congressman Wilson, knowing that you're a science and technology, a uh, member of science and technology committees, how does the economic situation with like science and technology, specifically the trade to the situation? Uh, never hear the question. Um, how will some of the science, the economy, correct the economy and affect some of the K through 12? Uh, I'm a member of the Science and Technology Committee, uh, which is the committee, one thing the committee oversees, which is a tremendous uh, asset in my district is NASA and the Johnson Space Center. And so that takes up a lot of my time there. We've had a tremendous mission. I know you've all been watching up to the sky and seeing what's going on. An incredible mission repair of the Hubble telescope. Uh, hopefully we'll get the astronauts down sometime. They've uh, had two days now where the weather in Florida has been too bad, so they've got to take another day in space. But uh, K through 12 is something we need to make a priority in Congress. Uh, you know, we have had our, we've had less engineers produced in America. We've had a dwindling supply uh, for about the last, well, gosh, for the last couple of decades. And it's something we need to stop. I mean, because those are the jobs in the future. Those are going to be the high paying jobs, high tech. Uh, we've, our economy has changed dramatically from when I was a kid growing up, and we were just a heavily, heavily, heavily industrial manufacturing uh, country. We're no longer that. It's high tech is the key, and we need to bring, we need to make an effort to make sure that those kids who are interested in that get the training and the education they need. Uh, and one thing we have great here is, our, I think the Texas school system is is among the nation's best. Our universities are top notch. Uh, you know, the, the school districts, you know, I grew up in the Clear Lake School, in the Clear Creek School District, Clear Lake High School, had a fantastic education. My kids are getting a great education over in Fort Bend, at the, in the Fort Bend ISD. And that's just representative. Those aren't, I don't want to single those, those districts out. There are, every district in this area I think is just fantastic. And we just need to make the effort and make it a priority. Yes, sir. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm a business owner, so my question is going to be basically about business. Texas and especially Houston is very well known about being a business-friendly environment. What do you do in order to keep it, and what are your ideas? I just want to hear it. My second question is going to be about the stimulus package. Is Houston or Texas getting enough chunk of that stimulus package, stimulus bill or money to Houston or Texas in order to uh, save the growth that we have right now or just keep people in their position, their job? To answer your first question about business, um, you know, the, we have a tremendous business environment here in Houston and in Texas. In, in, in Texas. Uh, as I talk to my colleagues in Congress from different parts of the country, uh, they're experiencing some problems that we can't imagine here. You know, 15, 20 percent unemployment states in the Midwest. So we had a tremendous environment. We encourage businesses to come here, grow, and develop. There are th 